Parental discretion is advised. This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. IndieWrestling.us. Check out IWC, RWA, and more. Click the Fight TV link on WrestlingMayhemShow.com to support this show and watch pro wrestling, MMA, boxing, and so much more. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash WrestlingMayhemShow. Sword? Hello? I'm here for the show. Hello? Hello? Missy? Anyone? What? Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Just wait. Wait for the perfect time to attack. Don't give up what you want. Take it back. Ladies and gentlemen, live from Broadway Avenue in the Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, from Sorgatron Media Studios for the first time ever, it is the Wrestling Mayhem Show, episode 580. I'm Mike Sorg at Sorgatron on the Twitter, in the new space. There's a window here. There's people walking by. I don't know where they're walking from at 10 o'clock at night, but they're there. Cars are going by. Trains are going by, and they're going to see the mayhem firsthand because uh, with me, uh, we couldn't find Larry. I, I hope he didn't go somewhere else, uh, so hopefully we can locate him uh, throughout the night. We're probably going to check on him with the Dutters or something, uh, but with us on the couch, first of all, Chad the Shad, the original OG Mayhemmer, is with us. Yes, I am here. And I noticed that Hollywood Squares isn't. Well, it's, it's over there, but it's yeah. not set up. It's it's yeah. You know, see you see the it's squares not, and everything, and and <sighs> it, it's there's a lot in progress. I mean, you got these bare stark white walls behind you and everything. We need to we need to fill with stuff. But you know, you know how it is. You know how it is. Every time we redo the studio, it starts as a box. Yeah, and then we fill it in with stuff. It's creative just the first stuff. week. You'll get more stuff in here. Yeah, you know? yeah. It's the first week. You know, we're still filling the box, right? We we we're making the box functional. We're making sure everything works. We we have you yes, guys. Yes. You have microphones. I I don't have enough microphones. If anybody else was in here, yeah. you know, by chance, and uh, and and we only have one line uh, with us, and uh, we'll get to him in a moment. But also on the couch, you can see is ringside Rob. Joining us again in person for the first time. This is your first time in studio. Yeah, it is. In in the new studio for the first time. And I probably saw the studio before most people too. So that's that's kind of yeah. You did. You did get to check it out. There was like nothing in here yet. So yeah. So you got to see the box before it was a functional Mm -hmm. box. So it's a good good location. You got a nice you know kind of Mexican grocery across the street there and. I love it. I love it. Um, but uh, but uh, we call him ringside Rob because Rob, of course, does video with us, especially around the IWC uh, shows mm-hmm. at ringside, typically. Mm-hmm. So um, and and you've done wrestling like you did five star wrestling filming even before that. Did that did yeah been doing IWC with you for about two and a half years now. Seems right. And then we did a little bit of RWA here and there. Been mm-hmm. working with Joe Dombrowski with his welterweight wrestling and Premier Championship wrestling. And, and then Cleveland. we did. Then we did the stomp out cancer thing last week, mm-hmm. which I finished the edit earlier today. Yeah. It's actually the the pre show is rendering right now on that computer over mm-hmm. there. So um, again, also nice because everything is in. Oh yeah, yeah. Show it off. Show See, off the t shirt. Stomp stomp out cancer. There you and it'll go. be available on digital download tomorrow, probably tomorrow. Possibly. Probably yep. around when a lot of people are listening to this mm-hmm. tomorrow. Um, and uh, you po- point the mic a little towards your face. Yeah, there. <laughs> Because it's kind of like off kind a of little light. bit. Yeah. 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 Exactly. It's, oh, it's I'm, very. I'm looking at the wrong one. It's very directional. Yeah. Very, very directional. Okay. But anyways, and also with us because we had to have him on, and it, I'm glad I got one of the Skype lines working this you week. You just had to. Because, because we'll, we'll talk about it. But the happiest man in the universe that the I know, man in the WWE universe right now, is the Riz out in Monroeville, well, besides, PA. J- besides Jinder Mahal, let's, let's just be fair. Mm-hmm. Besides Jinder Mahal and and probably John Cena and you know Miz and a uh, whole bunch of other play- people who have a lot of money because of wrestling, right. but I am the happiest man because the great Kali returned. Yes, yes, the, well, the OG Maja, Maharaja has returned. Oh, 
<laughs> Absolutely. And we'll get into that here in a bit as we, we kind of take a look back at, at Battleground, of course. But, of course, this is the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Check us out at WrestlingMayhemShow.com. You can join us here live every Tuesday night at 10 p.m. Eastern at Live.WrestlingMayhemShow.com, uh, which really just redirects you to the Facebook page for Wrestling Mayhem Show where we're streaming currently. Uh, and also, if you're in the local area and you want to be, uh, you know, kind of see it in person, come on in. We'll set a chair out for you. We're doing events on our Facebook page for each of the shows that we're doing here. So just let us know in comments that you'd like to actually attend in person, and we'll make sure we have enough chairs for everybody. Uh, so Is you can there hang pizza out. there? Yeah, well, there's, there's pizza here, it's but uh, we're going to have to figure out what we're doing because I don't know if, there, if a bunch of people start showing up. I don't think we have enough pizza, so we might have to well, figure something out there. Sorted. But if there's not enough pizza and you get here before 9 o'clock, the taco stands right across the street, cash Ooh. only, great stuff. Um, I think they might still have cow tongue. Um, so there's that Ooh. thing too. So it's, it's really good stuff. Uh, I'll, I'll put them over, uh, uh, you know, to the moon. Uh, but anyways, uh, so there's that. Uh, please drop us a line at that email address. Good times. Good times, good times at wrestlingmayhemshow.com and 412-206-WMS0 is the hotline. Um, you can also subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and um, of course, video versions on the YouTube and Facebook version. Please join the Facebook group uh, because that's where we have a lot of our conversation throughout the week, sharing a lot of stories through the week. Riz didn't hit his cough button in time. I didn't uh, hit my cough button. I'm sorry, Sorg. Yeah. It's okay, Riz. Amateurs. It's amateurs. <laughs> And uh, and I of course, one, do I? you can also. What's that? No, you're no, the only no, one without one. Watch it. Yeah, so yeah. you you gotta watch yourself. So uh, don't cough. Don't cough. Don't cough, in sir. In fact, in fact, hold your breath. <gasps> yes. The entire show. The entire show. Um, thank you to. Okay. We had. Oh man, did we get? Is this in here? I believe we did get a new Patreon supporter this week. What? I think Brandon is our Patreon supporter now. I again, Brandon again, Myatt. My, yeah, Myatt. My, you, the, <laughs> I just go with first names, Riz, unless it's in my handy dandy doc, which is not this week, because we don't have a producer this week. Um, but uh, he joins the collective. Thank you so much. It's great to have uh, you guys supporting us here. Um, you know, this way, you know, we always say it's kind of to keep the lights on around here, and literally, it's to keep the lights on around here because now we have a space that we have to pay rent for and, and the electric bill. Uh, so anything, any contribution, uh, you know, we only ask as little as like a dollar a month. I feel like I'm a telephone now, uh, but uh, it, it's 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 something that you're a part of the show. You're helping build the show. You guys supporting it uh, uh, financially like this is one of the things that we look at when we decide to maybe take a, on a venture like this, right? And of course, there's plenty of other things going on here um, outside of the Wrestling Mayhem show, but this, this is still the anchor of everything that we do here. There's a reason that there have been cardboard wrestlers in the, uh, in, in the window leading up to this, and, uh, and, and it's very, you know, obviously kind of wrestling-themed um, for anybody who comes in here. So, so it's because of you guys uh, that are part of this. That includes Bo Diggity. Woo! I don't know if it comes off on the mic, but that sounds even better with the echo in here. So, <laughs> Ed Burke. It look really good. Of course, also at the really fan of the show level, Ed Burke, the Matthew and Jennifer Carlin Foundation for Podcast Betterment, Trey Gar at tra BreakingTreyFabe.wordpress.com, Alex Carr is out there in California, Bobby F. J. Town, and then the Pocky Club $5 level with Tina Keys and Christopher Bishop. Thank you so much. Patreon.com slash Wrestling Mayhem Show and become our bosses. Uh, so, uh, with that, let's get into... Riz, Riz what? had the best pay per view Wait. watch ever. Oh, oh, I, I got no, 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 no. <laughs> minutes, Sorg. I thought you, I thought you just said let's get into Riz. I, I did um, in so many ways, <laughs> uh, but um, so many words. I mean, uh, that that just got weirder. I, I honestly, I honestly didn't think it was gonna happen. No, it's, it's, no, it seemed too I, good I, to be true, right? It, it, it seemed perfect. I mean, it seemed perfect. Like it was going to be. It, for me, I thought it was gonna. I was I'm just gonna. I'm, I was just waiting for uh, the weird tones of uh, Baron Corbin me, Corbin's music to play, and he go, "Hey, look, I'm on the outside of the ring. That means I won, right? Here, ding, 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 winner." I didn't expect the uh, Great Collie to come out. I did not expect that to happen. Uh, 
that was a good surprise. I could have. I, the hindsight is now 2020. When I heard when I, when first of all they pulled out the uh, Punjabi the Punjabi announcers. Uh, they they did an interview with with Jinder Mahal, which was pretty cool. Uh, they they brought back the like the little tiny box that you see in like the left hand corner, whenever they they do like these little one off interviews, and they had the entire Punjabi commentary team coming out or bringing out uh, Jinder Mahal, which I was like, okay, that's pretty cool. So now what? Uh, and then and then of course the match was you know. Uh, as good as a Punjabi prison match can be, which is I, I, I gotta say though, I gotta say though, the best Punjabi <laughs> prison match. Yeah, because down. they they didn't have a seven foot guy who can't walk yeah. in 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 the ring. They had two able bodies, yeah. or they can't like they had many able bodies. Cause that Actually, because which which one was Kali not in the very first, first one? Was it yeah. very first one? And that's probably the only reason they had a second one, right? Uh, because it was almost a year later, I think, mm. that they yeah. ended up doing it. So, uh, and, and this, and they actually like watered down the lethalness to it. Mm-hmm. There was no spiky uh, bamboo sticks on top of the cage. There were no uh, table of weapons, even though Randy Orton did grab weapons underneath the uh, ring, which were not steel and forced bamboo, by the way, which I was really angry about. Uh, but it just seemed like a cage inside of a cage match. Mm-hmm. That you still couldn't see through. Yeah. Yeah. You <laughs> can't. Uh, I believe somebody sat, somebody sat front row and went, I could go home and watch this on like one of those snowy TVs, and <laughs> yeah. and it'll be the same the same exact thing. So 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 not <laughs> not great not great on uh, uh, for the live audience. You're saying? Well, front row except, probably wasn't except that they got bad. the great call either. I, I mm-hmm. wonder now though, in the days of the network and unlimited data, if people like whip out their phones and actually watch the shows that they're at. If that so it seems to make sense. I've, yeah. done, I've done that before. Because I've gone to other things, you know, like baseball games, car races and stuff where that helps because, you know, listening to commentators and stuff definitely makes things easier. We yeah. did that. We yeah. did that. The last show at Mellon Arena. Oh, the wrong one. Uh, last show at Mellon Arena because it was like we just got tickets last minute. And it was the worst thing mm-hmm. um, because we got like, you might remember the obstructive seating in the top of Mellon Arena. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. yes. We were. Giant we in we front could of you. see the nice. ring. We couldn't see the screen. So when they play stuff on the screen, eh, like we couldn't see the top screen. We couldn't see yeah. the, the big screen. It, like we had no idea. We could hear it and that was it. So I think at the time, no, we pulled up an illegal feed on my phone to try yeah. to figure out what was going on. Yeah, I was, I was going to say. <laughs> You're like streaming I, somewhere I, in Europe to see yeah, what's going yeah, on yeah. right in front of yeah, you. Yeah, I'm, like, I'm watching on Sky say, Sports. I didn't, the net, I, didn't, I didn't know the network was that long. Uh, I, I could have sworn the network was just from the console energy center. Oh, it was. No, but, no, no, no. It was. It was. It, and I no. I wasn't watching the network. I was watching no. like a street, an illegal, illegal feed yeah. from Sky Sports. You were watching an illegal feed inside the show that you're watching an illegal feed on, Sorg. Yes, because I had shitty seats. Because damn it, he paid for those tickets. Because I paid for those tickets. Yeah, so he's still paying for the show. Yeah. Hey, yeah. if yeah. you're not gonna provide me <laughs> with view of the screen. Yeah. Then I'm going to bring my own screen. I I was I was at Invasion like back in like 2001, and my tickets were like so bad that it was like up in the corner behind the entranceway, so you were seeing the, you you know, like the back of the screen, (laughs) like every everything play out that way, and you couldn't see guys coming. Well, you could see guys coming out of the one side, but but damn it, it was Invasion, you know. (laughs) So damn it, damn it, you made it. Like it was supposed to be historic for the right reasons, but not. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Not what it ended up being necessarily. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so other than that, so 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 Riz, it, it happened, and happened. we all immediately. I think everybody here was um, well concerned for you. Well, I was I was actually running the uh, Mayhem Show account on Twitter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it just and, turned and, into, and, and you saw, it just turned you into May- letters at some point. So yeah, and and it, you saw before the show. Uh, I did like these weird uh, Kali memes, like with the with the Kali putting glasses on and 
And I believe there is I, – I couldn't find the one where he was in a toy car. I would have had that one on there if I would have known. And did they just say uh, blah, 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 on the, uh, yeah. on the pictures? Yeah. But once he came out, I just – I seriously just lost it. Like I, I – that was, that was a nice surprise. That was a good surprise on WWE's part. Now, put the belt back on him. Just saying. That's that's going a little too far there, Chris. No, no, yeah. no. Just just put the belt back on him. Make him face Kane again for like five five months. Or give him a Les- a Lesnar run where you know he gets the belt and then doesn't wrestle for four months. And I mean, just, that's that's what you they're could doing use him with, sparingly. That's you what could. they're doing we don't with want to Goldberg him. and Brock Lesnar right now. Pretty much, but good good for WWE for surprising me a little bit. I mean, I mean. That was that was a shock, weird shock, but it was a shock nonetheless. Absolutely. So, so other, were you sad to see that Kali didn't continue and be on on SmackDown tonight? He's 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 gonna be he's gonna be okay, sort of. He's gonna get that uh, he's gonna get that Legends contract. He's gonna get inducted in the Hall of Fame, and everything's gonna be fine. <laughs> Absolutely. Don't, uh, don't from, you dare laugh at me, Jed. From the chat, from the check, uh, my mic is saying, Kali versus Cena at SummerSlam, y'all. Oh, no, that's, good. that's definitely going to happen because, as we know, John Cena is the, is the epitome of America who hates all of our allies. So why not throw India in there? Well, we kind of are, aren't we? Uh, so, hey, or it's a tag team match with Shinsuke and Cena against Kali and Jinder. Or Rusev. Mm, no, Kali. Special because, guest referee. Yeah, Rusev. that's true. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Yeah, there you go. That, that, that could be interesting, actually. So, uh, other than that, again, I this is an, another one of those shows that seems to happen. I mean, I watched it with, you know, I, I watched it with somebody at the house and... and and uh, and it was not here yet. And uh, you know, I had a lot of fun watching it. I I really enjoyed the show. It was a great show. It was a great show. I mean, even, apparently, even though, a lo- apparently, a lot of the internet disagrees. I don't care. It's so unlike the internet to get honestly, up honestly, about anything. I I I do not care what the internet thinks. Mm. I may be on the internet right now, but I don't care. Let me like shit. I don't like what I I don't care uh, here on the internet. And, and my wrong says there was a disagreement last night. Was there it, not a giant pop for Kali when he popped up? Or was, or could you hear it over you screaming with glee, Riz? I mean, I I thought I heard a pop. Mhm. But that could have been just my inner self. <laughs> could have been just his ears for the height that he jumped. Yeah. Like there's still a hole in my on my roof right now. <laughs> yeah, there's a riz sized hole in his in his ceiling. I don't think insurance will, will cover that. No, no, no. probably not. Um, I mean, uh, other than that, like I, I, I thought it was great. It, it you know the uh, the tag match was killer <clears throat> at the beginning, right? Tag match was amazing. It was a yeah, it was just like this is the kind of tag match I like. <laughs> you know, it was it was Kofi and um uh Kofi and 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 Creed Xavier. I'm kind of call him Creed because they were dressed like. <laughs> It's like they found his old. It's like they found his his old consequences creep gear, <laughs> and 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 remanufactured it for for the rest of the crew. Yeah, which was which was pretty great. Let's be honest. There's enough fabric left over there. Oh yeah, absolutely, yes. absolutely. Because they just you know bought everything in triplicate in, yeah. at, at Impact and, Wrestling. Right. Yeah. Right. And right. I, I don't know if you saw the um the the interview after like after their match. Mm-mm. Uh, all three of them were in the back, and uh, like they, they said that uh, Xavier was almost in tears because that was his first win of a title. Period. Like it was the first time he pinned anybody for a title. Really? After all this? In WWE. In WWE. WWE. So he's never been a part of winning the title that he's never never won wow. in the at all or. Was, was he was he champion with our truth during that little short period of time? I don't think so. No. no. Was was but he yeah, running was, around with? Oh, that's right. He was running around with like Brodus Clay briefly. Yeah, and, yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah. And then, yeah, they, and then they said <laughs> they, they were talking about it, and they they 
Big E brought up a good point. Uh, Kofi Kingston is now uh, is one of the most decorative decorative African American wrestlers in WWE history. That's great. I mean, with tag with tag titles and continental titles, stuff like that. He is he, he and he still looks amazing, and I still think there's some one wor- like I, I want to say there's a world title push somewhere in there, if they want to. If they if, if they want to. Listen, I you know in a if in I, a world where Jinder Mahal got to step up and run with the ball and do yeah. tremendous with it. Yeah. You know, even I, I think even if we roll into SummerSlam and is is it's Law of Cena wins. Um, I don't care. It, it, you know, Jinder had four amazing months for a guy that was the the Namaste weird Namaste character at the beginning of the year. He was part of three man band a few year uh, a year ago. Was it a year? Maybe like two. Because uh, because because it's been long yeah, enough it was, for everybody more, to get fired and everybody to come back. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's yeah. true. And he was the one who got fired too. Mm-hmm. He got fired and came back on on Heath Slater's, like when Heath Slater did that whole thing when he wanted to come back, and now he's doing like a, um, he, and now look where Heath Slater is, look or was, look where Jinder Mahal is, it's it's it, it's a good thing to have right now. It's, it's awesome. Now when when we were saying with Kofi getting like big like a singles push, what was what of his biggest ones yet he, he had a run with like orton that was pretty see. big he's had the ic mm-hmm. yeah but i know like the feuds uh orton that's orton and then a lot of ic stuff yeah but orton. Yeah. but i mean orton it wasn't even for the title or anything but it was just the fact that it was somebody as as a uh, up there somebody's main orton. event yeah yeah um, Tina saying that we haven't had a, uh, an established African American world champ since The Rock, maybe Booker T. When you say uh, you know established, as in like of, of consequence, right? I mean so, somebody that really kind of made a difference, right? Like and just didn't ha- hold it for a moment. Because uh, yeah, actually, Are I don't think King Booker. I think Are we counting. King I think you count King Booker. I think King Booker was a really good run with that title. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. I mean, it's it, to me, it's very memorable. <clears throat> I don't so. remember how long it was with the title. Well, because he was doing the King Booker thing before. Cause yeah, he won King yeah. Of the Ring or whatever, and that led eventually. Listen, to that. listen. That that led to my stuff. favorite yeah. pay per view poster of him in the King Booker getup, mm-hmm. standing atop a dragon. Yeah, gotcha. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I either got it's still it's still hanging around. I was I was. It's a little tattered, but I still want to frame that thing yeah. and put it up. So <laughs> it's <laughs> just great, from being around. It's, a great it's amazing. It's amazing. Um, so I, I would count them. I mean, I yeah, think I, think, I mean, I want, I want, I want to run with him. I want, I want to think WWE wants to do something with him, but I know they're probably going to stick him until he's done with mm-hmm. the new day. Because it's one one of those things though that I like about with the brand split is that they can, if they want to, they can kind of goof off a little, I mean, not goof off, but experiment with one brand or the other, you know? Like, if if there was the one one belt, I don't think you'd be having, you know, gender would be nowhere near it, you know? Oh, no, no. So, gender would... And, and then it also, well, but then still it kind of elevates those guys because Brock's never around with the other one, you know? Mm-hmm. So even though there's the two main titles, there's only the one you ever see, and it's considered the lesser one at the moment. You know. Yeah, yeah. They, they do a good job keeping him in the spotlight since Brock is here and there. <laughs> uh, yeah, kind of, kind of on the state of uh, a little bit of a state of SmackDown. I'm sorry, I just looked down and I saw I saw a tweet um, from our favorite Booker, Road Dog. Booker T. Yes. Oh. No, 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 no. Okay, that, oh. Mm. Okay, that might be okay. Our second favorite Booker, yeah. uh, Road Dog. <laughs> Give this due, uh, dear haters. I've got two for, words for you. They ain't hashtag Fire Road Dog, and uh, <laughs> that's four who, words. That's, that's five words. Well, actually. it's one. Or no, he said they ain't quote Fire. They, yeah, they ain't hashtag. Yeah, quote, yeah so that, that counts. They one. ain't. So hashtag. I guess there's a Fire Road Dog <laughs> movement on Twitter with the hashtag. Seriously. Road dog, you're killing. Uh, yeah, well, here's everybody saying, "Hey, you, you, 
Can we get Fire Road Dog trending and replying to the Pro Wrestling Magazine? Oh, come on, guys. What's what's he done yeah. lately? I mean, is he like an he's he's an agent, right? He's an agent. He's, the, 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 he's he's who we uh, on this show we kind of we, we put the theory out that mm-hmm. uh, a, a while ago when SmackDown was first gaining steam that like yeah Road Dog's just sitting there like throwing stuff at a dartboard, <laughs> uh-huh. but it's working. Yeah. Making it work. Because, it's like, oh, we can make because, this happen. Because really, like everything, think about everything when it, when SmackDown was like, oh shit, this is a really good show. Mm-hmm. It was the most random ideas. Like, let's give Jinder Mahal the championship belt. Why not? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, and, yeah. But it's just like, oh crap, that worked. And and the stuff they were doing with with talking smack and 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 people in the title hunt and and the intercontinental title and everything there was just so much you know that that led to this land of opportunity idea Mm -hmm. that they do now like it was the more off the wall stuff that was kind of working exactly exactly the fashion police yeah period (laughs) that's it this is fashion police it's just improv class for for Tyler Breeze and Fandango, and mm. they're killing it right now. I mean, yeah. I mean, really, I I say this on on Raw uh, Raw wrap up all the time. You know, it's how does the two hours of SmackDown feel like more gets done of significance than the four hours counting two hundred five live that the Raw brand has? Because it's more because focused. they're stretching. It's more focused. They're stretching out. Yeah. So it feels like nothing happens because they're stretching across those four hours between all those those yeah. those wrestlers. And it just it gets it gets too, too crazy. SmackDown is more streamlined. Yeah, it is. Mm-hmm. It absolutely is. You know, and much like, you know, we used to love NXT because it was even more streamlined, right? Yeah. Like I can't believe that was only an hour of television with four matches it's that I really match, like. Match, and, match, and, match, and then it match. helps that they're not building to a pay per view every month. You know, so they right. get away with having, you know, an hour long show and right. yeah. or every few weeks or whatever the case may be, right? Yeah. Yeah. I don't understand so. the fire road dog thing though. I saw an amazing no, triple I think threat yeah. match this evening. And- yes. Yeah. And the tag team division seems and to be very su- healthy. Surprise comeback from Jericho. Yeah. The the women seem to be doing really well. Weird, but yeah, they seem to be doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's not. I mean, it's not. If they would all stop fighting each other all at the same time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're suffering from that. Be okay. Like we're rolling back to the let's throw them all together because because. Yeah. Thing, and that right? was the and, and going back to. Uh, Battleground. That was the quickest elimination match I've ever seen, with five people in it. Yeah. And it was just boom, boom, elimination, 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 mm-hmm. elimination. I was surprised over, Natalia done. won. Yeah, yeah, but but Natalia will have an amazing match with Naomi. Like, yeah, really. I mean, Actually, and, I and it came she, down to her and Charlotte too. I think Natalia's probably doing and they for have, title run. Have we really yeah. seen Naomi and Natalia recently? No, you know, no, not, not, not since. Really. Na- I don't think not since Naomi's really kind of come into her own here. Yeah, which is probably around what the beginning of the year or so. Yeah. Which I, I like. I, I like Natty's kind of angle on things of like you know uh, you you turn that into a the belt into a toy. How dare you? Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, like that, it's it's a good angle I, and I, it's a very believable like yeah. reason too. I think she's due a title mm-hmm. as well. She will uh, should be a good match on SummerSlam. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I I want to touch on something Brandon has in chat room, but first I want I want I want to finish off any talk about Battleground. Was there anything else that really stuck out to you guys? I think AJ Kevin has been uh, Kevin Owens has been phenomenal uh, yeah. tonight on SmackDown. Yeah. I think I think you know I love that. I like that it's going back and forth. You know, I these are the two guys that. It doesn't feel overblown with, and, they're, they're and they haven't been feuding for forever either. You know, mm-hmm. whereas like with on on the Raw and yeah. well, and it carried over from SmackDown where you had like Miz and Dean that have been going at it forever, yeah. and, and you don't care anymore. And they've had some good matches, yeah. but it's it's kind of it's, it's fresh. almost gone on just a little too long. Yeah, it's fresh. Yeah, notice yeah. what you don't see on SmackDown that you saw on Raw every week before the brand split. You don't see. Kevin Owens versus Sami Zayn every every week, right? Yeah, which was I mean it was amazing matches every day every day it happened, but it did get a little stale at the end. And then they decided to hey let's put them both over at SmackDown, but not touch each or, other. Or or we need to address as Bobby F J Town calls it lamb chop booking. Yeah, yes. Which, which I can't remember the right. entire definition of that. It's it's the. And, oh, it's the it's the two yeah. people fighting each other for Forever. all of eternity. It goes on and on, yeah. and on and on and on and on and on. on. Yeah, which, they start they which, started fighting, which, not knowing what which, it was. Which it's fine yeah. to bust out once in a while, but remember they had remember when 
Zane and Owens had their final confrontation like about a year ago, and then like two years, two two years, two weeks later, they were back to fighting one another. Yeah. You know, so mm-hmm. it's like so if you push it as oh, okay, this is their last showdown. It's good to come back to it, but you know, if you wait a little while first, yeah. Give Speaking us time. of yeah. Lamchalk booking, we got John Cena versus Rusev again. Yeah. <laughs> <sighs> hey, hey, because he, those he Bulgarians were, were button heads with him again. <laughs> God damn it, Chad! He fought for America. I don't care. Bulgaria. I don't, I don't care if he fights. I never asked Bulgaria. him to fight for America. Was America in danger? As an American, I'm happy with the one-sided, you know, booking of that. I, but it, I never. It's a, it's, a, it's it'd be understandable if uh, Rusev came out like the Iron Sheik and like spit on the flag and and did some terrible things. But I don't think even Rusev was doing anything to America per se. No, he was doing it to John Cena. I think John America. Cena just came out and was like. He hey, is buddy, America. I think all, you're talking shit on America. All Rusev was doing was assaulting pool sides on Lana's uh, Instagram feed with his handsomeness. Yeah. He's just trying to make all, it in this country, just I like mean, John all, Cena is. All Rusev wanted was a title match at Money in the Bank. Yeah, and he didn't get it. All he wanted. And then John Cena comes around. Now he can't get anything. Couldn't even get a he pole into a, into a flag what stand. <laughs> Yeah, I never. How come I have never? Maybe I, I need to brush up on my flag match. So for, no, 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 no. Okay, so we film. Rob and I film. I, I, was, I was about to say. Okay, the, go ahead. The flag match at IWC. You know, this last Saturday, it was kind of fun, but that's the first time I've I've seen. You know, they had the pull up in the one corner, and mm-hmm. it's nice because it was right across from Hard Cam. Yeah, <laughs> it looked good, really good. good thinking, thank you and, guys. And it had the two. You know, kind of where it it. Uh, diverged and you could put you know both both flags up and it looked you know it wasn't too terribly complicated i don't know if i have they ever done a flag match in iwc before <laughs> like do they get to bust that thing out much not or? that i'm aware of oh. i i'm like yeah that's a good question where did they yeah. get that mechanism yeah it's, um iwc threat level midnight available for cause, pre-order because it was a very US, nice US, little apparatus yes. for for that for something that yeah they use i swear they've and, never done and when has wab done a flag match like that i don't remember them having to go to the stage no plan no, no, this no, 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 no. that was because like this that was is going a on i'm watching more. like what yeah. is this it's yeah. like like an ambulance what, match how, or something well, like, there's a certain yeah, how, point how is this going on there's wait a, a second i missed some rules here yeah. there's a certain point where rusev like kicked away the stand or something so yeah he can do it so so and like oh john cena is going to do the same thing he's just going to take the stand away because he was creeping up over the the bulgarian side right and uh and he just like Instead, he wants to muscle the stand. <laughs> not very American. <laughs> not very American. No, no. You, you know. just knock out away. Yeah, yeah. That's, just, that's what Americans I, do. I thought they were just. Gonna, I wanted somebody to just toss the flag into the stands. That's all I wanted to do. Just, <laughs> like just hilarious. chuck it and be like, "There, just go get it." Just throw it. Well, like yeah. the Happy Gilmore flag throw. Yeah, sails by. Or, hits, hits the hard cam guy. <laughs> <laughs> or what is? Or what is it? The. Uh, you know, usually like the the bull rope matches or whatever, where they got to touch. You know, like you touch the turnbuckle and the other guy's right behind him, yeah, touching it. Also, you know, <laughs> just just yeah, is, I, is there I, a I way to like, do that with flags? Kind of like the the oh, I'm just gonna like leap froggy either. at the end and halfway through oh. this the bull rope matches, they decided every bull match has touched the corners. Mm-hmm. And I was like, yeah. when when did they decide that all bull rope matches have to touch corners? Yeah, yeah. Like, they just made it. Well, oh, no, then, it's always and, been and like this. And they're only allowed to end, like, two different ways. And they added the lights. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so you made sure. And then they had a cowboy for, in the for middle. For the slow kids. Yeah. That, <laughs> yep. I don't, I don't remember all this. This is just making it fantasy history that's not how stan hansen did it uh we have some stuff from the chat room uh bobby fj town says they didn't even bother to digitally add bulgaria's colors to the ramp no, no. i i, I did look at this yes uh, it was a reporter. dark it was a dark green hue on the ramp that was it there was no red w- it, it just kind of bled lazy down. yeah it, it just kind of bled yeah. down i mean i think that was that was suitable you know no? You saying that, no no deal no no I say so it was, it's like this is how last minute this. <laughs> I really the liked was. the aesthetics of Battleground and the colors and the mm-hmm. intro that they used. It was really nice. So yeah, it is really lazy for them not to <laughs> yeah. do anything. Also, also for this flag match. Yeah. Also, it felt like the <laughs> graphics on the on the on the set were distracting. They it seemed was. to move more than normal. 
Yeah. Right. Like, like it was a little too busy. Yeah. 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 No, but no, there was just like too much going on during matches. You were just like, what the hell? Like they put you know? the screen on the bottom so they could see. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Like, it, I mean, like I mean, it low. wasn't it wasn't as bad as Backlash when they have those little hooks going back and forth. Right. <laughs> yeah. Right. Right. Well, yeah, and it reminds me back at you know the Unforgiven that was here in Pittsburgh where it was Stone Cold's face like multiple times in this weird creepy way it like and it kept and it kept like turning and it's moving like but but that was like mm-hmm. up. In the set, right? But it's just yeah. so freaky for us to watch from the nosebleeds. And, and it was at a time when there weren't like 30 screens up there. No, too, no, no, no. It, it was just, it this, yeah, like you say, kind of Simpler the centerpiece. Time. Simpler, yeah. time. Simpler times. No, no pyro at all, cutting costs. Well, yeah. when you add four new pay per views, um, well, you add a video screen that's the whole length of the floor. Yeah. I guess right, you have to right. cut somewhere. Right, exactly. So no um, more pyro. You know, somebody, the floor somebody, is somebody, a screen now. Somebody has to develop those graphics. Think about that too. The, like the somebody has to guy. sit there and do that. The pyro guy. Learn a new skill. We re we re <laughs> re uh, educated it's, him. It's like the poor bastard yeah. that you know. Like once VCRs weren't weren't a thing. Okay, anymore, you're had doing graphics trade. now. He's like, ah, <laughs> yeah. ah, ah, I work with my hands and it's explosives. Yeah, well, get the coding. Yeah. Uh, Mad Mike, let us know. He's filling us in on what's going on out there. It says you guys, Daniel Bryan just had a paternity test to see if Chad Gable is his son on te- on Smacking Talk. Smacking talk. Smacking, smacking talk. Smacking talk. I, I talk. thought they were done. Wait, they're I not done. They're all dog. Talk, like, weren't, weren't they? Weren't they pirating it out on on Tout or something? <laughs> <laughs> I think he had like tweeted something about that. Like you know, yeah, he's, like like him and Renee were going rogue and and uh, <laughs> go up there. You can see it on Tout. <laughs> yeah, and, and it would single handedly bring back or at least double the people on Tout. Yeah, so like <laughs> at 12. least double, at least yeah. double the nobody on Tout anymore. <laughs> can I even download Tout anymore? Um, also, uh, so I wanted to touch on Brandon. Brandon had a, uh, uh, article about, uh, Renee, Renee Young is a free agent and then something else going on. Um, yeah, apparently she's going to be involved on both raw and SmackDown. Uh, so, I mean, she was already doing raw talk in the pre-shows. So I don't know, I guess she's just going to be backstage for a lot of it. Doing interviews? I don't know. Yeah, because I thought she just kind of she just showed up wherever the hell they wanted her, and it was hey, that's fine. But so she's like the backstage interview Lillian Garcia. Isn't that who that Charlie like girl much. is? Yeah, yeah. I, Charlie. Oh, but you mean like all the girls that I can't tell the difference? Yeah, like even though some of them are blonde and some of them aren't, still I don't know the difference. <laughs> or I'm like, I wait, still, was this a girl from call, NXT? I still you know? call Charlie. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah okay. Char- like I'm starting to like. It, it, it's like that thing that happens in tag teams where I can't tell them apart, right? It's just mm-hmm. like every backstage girl, just like, have, are, who are you? Are you what? Mm, like, who you know, are these you, girls? And yeah. they're also related to the Us- Usos. And just, yeah. <laughs> yeah and everybody, sure. Everybody sure, why not? Right? Rock mm-hmm. and, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, st- I still call all of them uh, Kelly or uh, Kathy Kelly anyway, so it's fine. Yeah. <laughs> you you all will always be my Kathy Kellys. Um, <laughs> By the way, tout is still a thing. Oh man, wow. we should all get on and there. And probably sure in Bulgaria or, or you uh, know, places. picture here. Oh, 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 wrong camera, wrong just, camera. Oh, look, just, wow, look at that. Yeah. All right. Uh, Riz oh, just, is, that, just, uh, <laughs> is that new content what? or is it running ads wow, from seven it, years that ago? Is, did that like is their, <laughs> that is their intro. Did like uh, did ISIS take it over or something? Is that, is that what they're using now? Out. Well, I'm downloading this because it looks very. And uprising ish. Yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that's yeah it's <laughs> it's like it in some third world country that's like their oh, social media they're left with. Maybe it's yeah. just like maybe MySpace took it over and Justin Timberlake's <laughs> making content for it. MySpace yeah. took something over, Sork? Yeah, you know, I mean they're doing some stuff. They're oh, doing something in, in two thousand six. I, I just saw a gun. Oh what's I just my, saw a gun. Oh no, oh no. I'm telling you, I think it's it's used to we better it's not. It's bad. Riz, you're on Riz, a list now. Riz, Riz, don't go radical on us. The you're on a, no, I'm, I'm deleting this app right now. It's, you're on a list too late, buddy. You're on I'm a list to, now. I'm, I'm trying to remember my password. All right, we'll try that later. We'll try that later. If you have All a right. town account, go. I would love if anybody out there, we'll start a thread on, 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 the, uh, face, on the Facebook group. Um, uh, download Tout, sign in, sign up, make a Tout, screen cap it, put it on. <laughs> and then watch I, government and agents. And I, storm I think at that house. point, at that point, we will have taken over Tout. <laughs> like we could make, we could make Tout, Tout, a, that's, Tout that's a sleeper our, show our yeah. network. So we were, we were trying to make. Didn't Chachi try to make Plurk a thing? Plurk, make Plurk come back. 
Absolutely. I, why, why? There's no way it should be any other password than these. Uh, I've tried all it's my... Tout. It's tout. It's a sleeper standby. cell now. It Sorry. is now. It is now. We'll see if I still have a... We'll see if I still You're have a You're going to get your account. new studio password rated. Password is tout. Yeah. Password is tout. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's how I do all my social networks. Um, anyways, <laughs> how long are the videos on Tout? Like nine seconds or something. I forget. I can't something remember. Ridiculous. And who knows what they are but now? But they were hyping it, and then they, you know, it's like, oh, this is so great. You know, and then they'd get well, cut off know, every remember, time. Remember, it was like you know, uh, Vine was six seconds. Something yeah, else, yeah. something else was seven seconds. And yeah. just like a whole second more. <laughs> second. Is that where it's they are taking care of bandwidth? Um, anyways, mm-hmm. on that note, hey guys, uh, uh, a big shout out to our friends Slice on Broadway. It, it, uh, Rob, can you grab that sign over there? I think uh, it's appropriate for this time. I think we've eaten all the pizza. So, uh, But, uh, you know, you, the wrestling fans out there, that, wait, there's my camera, uh, the wrestling fans out there, the Wrestling Mayhem Show fans out there have been really kind of supportive of our sponsors and we've really appreciated it. Even uh, signs like uh, this that Rob has has been popping up at some local wrestling shows. Eat at Slice on Broadway. Uh, but check them out. They're the perfect pepperoni pizza supporting Pittsburgh podcasting and including, you know, here, right here on Broadway. They're further up on Broadway, our good friends there, also in Carnegie and PNC Park. Uh, so uh, uh, check them out. Oh, and a big tip we got an awesome cast is uh, the Slice on Broadway uh, PNC Park is now on Uber Eats. <laughs> Here yes. in Pittsburgh, so yes. so check that out. Are you gonna? Can you get some Uber Eats like that far, Riz? No, I can't. No, probably not. <laughs> no. Oh, but honestly, every time I go down there now, this is, this is probably not going to be part of the commercial. But every time I go down there, I eat, I eat on slice on Broadway at PNC Park. Nice. It's that good. It's, it's, you're like I eat food. In I eat Uber. food because <laughs> I, I think it's. Food. <laughs> It's it's Food a good meetup point for for going to uh, you know some of the shows down there too like Raw coming up next Monday yeah. here in in Pittsburgh absolutely absolutely yeah. instead of going to the pizza place everybody else goes to down there yeah. let's just get some slice if it's a nice day we will get some slice delivered right there and eat in front of a console arena with the the Mario Lemieux statue PPG Sorg PPG what I say. Console. Console. It's up. Oh. It's it's old it's news. PPG Paints. It sounds American. like a hardware store. Did you store. hear them making fun of PPG Paints Arena on uh, on uh, on the um on the, on the ride along no. a few weeks ago when Corey Graves was on there? Un American. Un American and 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 Kurt Angle and and Big Show. No. I'm- no, I want. Is it Rilo? Oh, yeah, yeah. They were. They, they, I don't know. They, they slammed it a little bit. They're. I, uh, I, I I was thinking table for three, which which aired yes, uh, last night, right? Right. I saw the Kurt Angle one, but I didn't see the. I thought Corey Graves. Graves. I thought Graves was on that same one. No. Either way, they were coming from Pittsburgh. How? Long? I think I missed. Uh, I missed. I saw the the one I watched was Sheamus and Cesaro, and then Big Show and Angle. And they went the sheets. There's another one after that. <laughs> oh, that I did not watch. okay, okay, okay. Yeah, how long has Grace the Civic Arena been one. gone? It must have been on the other one. A while. Okay, because that's gonna They're say Wilkesbury. So. so I was gonna say this is new for Angle. This this building, at least. Yeah, he wouldn't have performed there. Yeah, we've always been gone for so long too. So he's just you know we used to Ross Raver Ice Garden. Yikes! <laughs> yeah. Hey, Rostre Rice Garden's getting upgrades. Are they? They won the Craft Hockeyville. Yeah. I'm sorry, what? They won Craft Hockeyville, <laughs> which is a contest to get $100,000 in upgrades nice. for their local hockey community. And they get voted on. And um, there was a place, Johnstown, I believe, won it the first year. And then a place in Minnesota, I think, won it the second year. And now Rostre River Ice Garden pulled together and they got enough votes and they won. So the Penguins will have a preseason game at the Ross Draper Ice Garden. And um, other improvements will be made to make it to upgrade it to a better better facility for the nice. for youth hockey. Hmm. Nice. It's good to see. So you. it's not gonna be as as bad as it as we, we did go it, and it's see not it gonna be too cold and, uh, it's not gonna be too cold and almost kill Steve Carino. <laughs> No. Like that one time? No. Um, I, I saw one wrestling show Of all show the ways there. for Steve Carino to go. Oh, you, uh, the the charity show that didn't go too well. I one think year. so. Yeah. Angle was there. Angle was there. Yeah, yep. yeah that was the one I was at. I, I had that show on my Boy. hard drive somewhere. Ooh, what, hap- what happened there? It was interesting. It was... It was interesting. It just um, because they had like Chris Masters and a bunch of guys. Yeah, that, yeah. straight ad masters. Was yeah, it like that yeah. kind of wave of of 
yeah, um, yeah. Those guys, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like those guys that had just been through, and you know, Graves yeah. was on it, or Sterling was on it, and like, like the, the, somebody was hurt. I don't know if it was Angle or, or somebody was hurt, and because there was just the schmas at the end with with Angle, uh, Shane Douglas, and and Jimmy Vegas. You know, representing Pittsburgh in America yeah. or something, you know, and it was for cystic fibrosis and it just didn't go well. Somebody was somebody was trying to promote shows and it didn't just didn't go over well at all. Mm-hmm. So. So there is that. But um, that was years ago, though. That was. Yeah, it was probably creep up on 10 years ago. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyways. On that note, I was trying to go to a break. We'll be right back. We'll see uh, whatever faces, uh, other faces we might dig up around here. You never know who's walking around on the street. And uh, and uh, we'll be back after this with a big question. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. It's the Wrestling Mayhem Show. Mike Sorg here in the new location, of course, in Sorgatron Media Studios with us. Uh, Chad the Shad. What, 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 Larry, you found us. I did. I did. I had to go home and map quest it and uh, then run to Kinko's to print off my map quest, but I got here. <laughs> That's good. You completely went to the other place, didn't you? I did. Yeah. And okay. The cops were called. And- oh. I was hiding in your neighbor's backyard waiting for it to die down. Oh, that's not great. That's not great. That's not the. It's also not the first time. No. Uh, Also with us, swapping out uh, on the on the line from Poughkeepsie, New York. It is Mad Mike. Hey, hey, uh, Sorg, Sorg. We can't play the game where you're looking at the wrong camera today. No, no, it's a little easier today. I'm getting used to it. Uh, so also there's other people here, so at least they have something to look at. Because literally, I was literally looking at a blank wall because this is where the camera used to be over here. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like that. <laughs> so so I was looking at nothing talking on a video podcast when the camera was over here. And even Mike's screen was, I don't know, I, I probably put him here on the fake screen, it, actually. Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it. There's gonna, listen, there is an adjustment period with the new studio, so, yes. uh, and we're doing pretty good no considering. Brick wall, so. No brick wall, so we don't know what to do with that, right? So, and uh, But it seems to be doing pretty good so far. Everybody's hanging out in the chat room on the Facebook Live. Uh, but it is time for the big question. And um, we, we kind of came up with this. Of course, you know, we talked with uh, uh, Riz at the beginning of the show about the Punjabi prison match and how the namesake of the Punjabi prison, uh, uh, the great Kali, came back. It brought him out. You know, even if it was only for a moment, uh, uh, it was a great moment, right? Uh, so, you know, it, it was inevitable, right, with the Punjabi prison match coming back. Something that happened twice, and he was at least relatively involved both times, and it was because of him in, in the long run, right? Uh, so so I kind of wanted to pose the question of what other kind of specialty matches that, you know, maybe they were connected to a wrestler, like maybe The Undertaker has a lot of them, right? Uh, but, but maybe something outside the box that, you know, you'd like to see brought back, and who would you like to see kind of brought back with that as as a wrestler and it's going to be a wide thing you know uh, we're 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 gonna go living for the most part uh but what, what would you like to see that's out there you have, you have one chat yeah yeah i have one let me tell you about it i can't wait for you to tell me about it i will tell you about it right now the one i think would be really interesting to bring back in my eyes would have Brock Lesnar bring back Ken Shamrock's lion den and just I destroy like people. <laughs> Not the weapons one he had Steve Blackman with, mm-hmm. just the original lion's den. The one he had with like Owen Hart. Yeah. Lesnar can bring it back, and Paul Heyman can just walk around the top just hyping the hell out of it. Who wants to step into the lion's den with the beast incarnate? That'd be fun. That would be amazing. Wouldn't it be? It'd be like a like a big circus event. And you could redo it too, so where you could where you can lower it actually in the ring. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You could do some some because that was a really funky. Didn't they put it in like the theater next to MSG one time? 
Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Like during a SummerSlam or something, maybe. Yeah, I, so. I think it would work too because of Lesnar's UFC background, dabbling. Mm-hmm. So he could yeah. be like, you know what? It's not the octagon, but they could it's been up. here before. The lion's den. They could just set up an oct- octagon, though. I mean, they put a sumo ring in the WrestleMania. True. You know? Yeah, but that was just a matter so, of unless UFC taking down has the ropes that and copyright or patented. I don't know. But you know what the WWE does have in their large warehouse? What's that? A lion's den. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There you go. Um, Larry, do you have one? Uh, not yet. Okay, I got. Thinking. I got one. I got one. Oh, yeah, I forgot mine. Wait, <laughs> I, Mike, I have do you have one? one? You Wait, go ahead, my Mike. All right. Um, I, I I would like to bring back a match we haven't seen. It, it was on SmackDown a while ago, but uh, it's called the Parking Lot Brawl. Mm-hmm. And basically, it took place in the parking lot, where it was just a giant ring of cars. It was John Cena versus Eddie Guerrero, and it was fucking awesome. But I think the person that needs to bring it back this time, Baron Corbin. I like it. I like it. Yeah. Against who? Who who, would you like to see back there? Oh, (sighs) gee. Luke Harper. Baron Corbin and Luke Harper. That'd be a good oh. one. Jeez, where's he been? <laughs> good stuff. I still think that Luke Harper and Eric Rowan are the ones that attack Brizongo. You could think be, they put be. them back together? I why not? Why They've not? both been off for a very long yeah. time. Yeah. So yeah. true, true. Um, so I got one that's a little different. I and, and it may not have not have been around for a while. Um, but. It hasn't been in a certain place. I would like to see something along the lines of an X, uh, an Ultimate X match, come to the WWE. Mm. Oof. And maybe we see, you know, I mean, one that could be a playground for the cruiserweights, or that can be something where AJ Styles brings it over. That would be really interesting. As that. somebody that was really big with the cruiserweights then AJ and everything. Something you know, like the cruiserweights would have been awesome in a Punjabi prison match. <laughs> they would just be Seriously. swimming no, in the, and out of the... The match would have lasted 10 seconds. You saw how quickly it was Yeah, brothers. but I mean, think how many high spots you could have had off of that cage. Oh, jeez, Off of yes. both of those cages. We didn't even, <laughs> even talk about the Singh brothers. Holy crap. Those guys are freaking champs. <clears throat> yeah. Freaking champs. I, either way, they had their moment. Like the 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 one sing brother is going to be in, in a highlight reel uh, highlight reel for years. Yeah, from and that. it's all just going to be Randy Orton. Yeah, or him and Randy Every Orton. Time we have another Punjabi what, prison match. <laughs> what was that um, TNA match? It was like a, the reverse Royal Rumble. It was a reverse Battle Royal. Is that Battle yep. Royal? Is that what it was? You heard about that on that, the Magic Christian, didn't yeah. you? Yeah, that would be good in the Punjabi prison. <laughs> that was great. What was that AJ and Christian talking about? Like that was the most confusing thing that we were ever involved in. Yeah. <laughs> So, that would be good. That, in the that'd be good in the Punjabi match. prison. You start on the outside of the second ring or cage. You have to, you have to break in. The Can we put some jackals and out there while we're at it too? So oh. you put some lions. Hell so match. Make it the kennel from hell. Kennel from hell match. Yeah. Yep. 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 Yeah. Let's never do that again. <laughs> okay. I, I have a match. Okay. Well, you know, we could do the kennel from hell with the big dog Roman Reigns. Ah. Would he shit on the floor just like the dogs did? Yes. Because <laughs> the dogs actually believe shit on that. The floor. Um, They're scared. Mike, did you give one? Yeah, I said the parking lot brawl. Parking lot brawl. Okay, I was gonna say a boiler room brawl. Okay, and who, who would you like included in that? Um, God, I didn't think. Do of we that. go full mankind on this thing? Yeah, you have to. All right. Um, hmm. mankind Dean Ambrose. Mankind Braun Strowman. Ooh. Strowman has done well with actually, the ambulance Actually, match. Yes. Strowman so. can just bring the boiler room match. That that would be okay yeah. mm-hmm. in the long run. So, I like it. I like it. Right. I like the uh, Rob is still here. If we can get him on a microphone for a moment. Do you have one? I don't. You don't? Okay, if you have one, let me know. I want to get through the chat room here. Yeah. Um, just just, just grab, grab Chad's mic real quick or something, and we'll get, we'll get you. Um, from the chat room, we had a lot of it. Uh, one Brandon saying Booker T bringing back the King of the Ring tournament. I'd love to him just be the God. preside over it. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like if they maybe they do the King of the Ring tournament, Lord like, of the Ring, <laughs> Lord, 
Lord, or, uh, Lord of the King of the Ring, right? If, and if you know gonna, what you could do, and if you wanted to bring back the King of the Ring tournament, you have two presiders, one for Raw, one for SmackDown. Jerry Lawler picks four guys from Raw. Booker Ooh. T picks four guys from SmackDown, and then we have an eight-man tournament. And that could be something they do on their own, just like they do like the women's tournament and the CWC and everything, right? Yeah. Like that can be a special yeah. they do. It's my dream. If they're gonna... And hell, you could have Regal pick four guys from NXT. Yes. Boom. Yes. He was also a king of the ring. Absolutely. If they're gonna bring that back, they have to like put it back on the same level that it was, where it was an actually it was actually an important tournament and not just oh look, it's King Barrett. <laughs> You that's, know, that's where the network comes into play now. Yeah, that's yeah. A, totally. that's a network special now. Yeah, you can do something yeah. like that. Yeah, I mean, like you not, not, do that not a full then. on pay per view. It could be a multi night thing. You know, you do it for like four weeks as as a special uh, oh, uh, Thursday God, night talking. show or something. <sighs> Sorry, you're getting me heated over here. I love I love King of the Ring. I love it. Make I'm it get so. excited, and they're not going to do anything about it. Nope, nope. It was on the questionnaire about bringing it back. <sighs> They kind of halfway did it a little bit, like in the early days of the network, Give right? Me a full blown so. reboot of King of the Ring with NXT and like make some names out of these people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, let's mm-hmm. fucking do that. Like the, the, the king, the king of NXT, could they come up to be Make another bigger than eight? Way into the main roster, right? That would be good yeah. for two hundred five live for uh, Neville's King of the Cruiserweights. Mm-hmm. Make. That an actual Just gimmick give match. me tournaments. That's all. Gold Rush go. tournaments. Tournament King of the Ring King tournaments. Of the uh, Alex wants WLC. Yeah. Oh, oh my God. God. I can't believe we didn't think of that. That's great. That's a good one. That's great. I, I, I one that you got one? Okay. I'll get over to Chad's mic there and we'll um, hold on. Let me yeah, flip it off and flip it up to him and then flip it back on. All right. Just just, just, just speak. Just speak into, speak into the piece over there. I was oh, gonna say the the King of the Road match, the, <laughs> yes, where they were when, when we're long on the you know on the back of a you know the flatbed truck with all the crap or whatever. Who's in it? Who's in it? It I I think with the level of vehicular mayhem that we've seen, I th- I think it would have to be the Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns ultimate blow. Getting off WWE, I feel like that could also be a really good Son of Havoc match. Maybe Son of Havoc and Son of Mayhem on Lutra mm-hmm. could do it, right? Or you. Clearly, don't read my tweets because I said the exact oh, same. Oh, you do! Damn it! No, yeah, no, I, I don't because I don't want to be spoiled on Wednesday nights. I'm waiting uh, for it to come on it, iTunes. I, as I was watching the Son of Havoc and Son of Madness beatdown, I just tweeted, "Man, I hope Dario Cueto seen the King of the Road match." Oh, <laughs> yeah, I might have seen that actually. I might have. I and, might. and and like the uh, was the House of Horrors match and all these other things. It'd be like at the com- it'd be, they'd film it at completely the wrong time of day. <laughs> yeah, so. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's ta- it's it's taking place at ten o'clock at night, but it's it's clearly you know like one in the afternoon or something. There's a there's a Craigslist for a slightly used truck with uh, hay bales in the back that's uh, <laughs> uh, a, a thousand miles away from wherever uh, they were supposed to be. Yeah, and it would somehow it would somehow still end at the arena. We should have a trolley yeah. match. <laughs> <laughs> Just a just on a, a moving subway car. With that just, being said, would bringing yeah, back the hardcore title count? Yeah, yeah, twenty four seven, twenty four seven, absolutely. Just in, inside a ball pit at a like, like kid zone. That makes me think of the El Generico match that I always see online, where he's fighting that dude in a kayak, and the referee's trying to push him down what? the stream. You ever seen this? No. You want to go ahead and look that up? Oh, jeez, uh, um, it's it's good. It's I've good. always had a dream match that take that takes place in a surface elevator. <laughs> okay. Call it call it five floors of hell. Um, <laughs> also from the chat room, uh, uh, Travis out there is saying mankind versus abyss in the uh, boiler room would be one thing. Um, do 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 do. I said the Brandon one three tier cage with DDP from uh, Wheels. <laughs> uh, yes. Yes. Uh, yes. And of course, you can't have gimmick matches without bringing up Judy Bagwell on a pole with Bobby F J Town. <laughs> uh, yeah. Wait, yeah. what? What would be the modern equivalent of Judy Bagwell on a pole? Oh man, um, <laughs> Dixie Carter? No. Like on w- in WWE, um, I feel like maybe Paul Heyman on a fork. No, 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 no. Ellsworth on a pull. That's good. That's good. That, I don't see anybody one, right? wanting to go for yeah. that though. Ellsworth. Yeah, just everybody Where's leaves the, them up there. It's the gonna be the weirdest match because nobody's gonna. But, yeah. 
the uh, uh, Paul Hay- or Paul Heyman, Paul Bear uh, getting covered, filled in cement was a good one too. <laughs> so, who do you want to die? Um, we could put Ellsworth in that. You know what I was a fan of. That, that, that's, that's a, you know, you know what I was a fan of that came back recently, and they actually ended up do, doing it twice. Was when they put they did it to Jericho and they did it to Paul Ellering. They put them in the cage in the in the oh the, uh, shark, the cage. shark cage above the ring or, yeah. and stuff like that. Of course, both of them did it exactly the same thing and dropped like a chain or nux or something down yeah. to whoever. So it was like, hey, don't put a bump the ring, guys. Maybe maybe uh, electrify so. it. Electrify. Yeah, uh, <laughs> you know. T- TNA doesn't get many things right, but during the King of the Mountain match, the shark cage is outside of the ring. Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. It's also sort of a penalty box uh, system. So. Well, yeah. Yeah, it is. Which that turns into another question. What kind of a gimmick match? I, I answered mine pretty much, but what kind of gimmick match would you like to see come from another Fed to WWE? Aztec Warfare. Mm-hmm. Yep. Ultimate X. Makes sense. Makes sense. Um, man, Lego Lego Deathmatch War Games. <laughs> War Games. You know, what? I would love War to Games see... would be a mess, <laughs> just a mess. Especially if WWE did it. It'd just hey, you know what? They mess. have enough people on the roster now. World War Three. <laughs> yeah, seriously. Fuck it. World War Three. One ring Raw. One ring SmackDown. One ring NXT. Let's get one fucking winner. <laughs> I like it. I actually kind of like that idea. So, um, you know, hey, uh, look at all the gimmicks that they're bringing out for these pay per views to get people to pay for the network. They, yeah, yeah, yeah they could figure out a way to do it. So, yeah, I don't think that'd be too against them on that one. So, indie style st- steel cage. Oh, the one that looks like it's going to fall and die on everybody. Actually, they have that. It's actually kind of what they use for uh, the house shows for WWE. Mike, I would like to see them uh, come out with, uh, instead of a bag full of tacks, a bag full of Legos. Mm. Yeah. I think that would Lego be death amazing. Match. I, think, I think Black Diamond just did a show at the unofficial Lego museum. Did they? Over in Ohio. Those things hurt, <laughs> man. Yeah, they, yeah, yeah. You can bleed off of those. There's some marks like Chess Flex where Sharp somebody corners. had some pictures of their match over there and like the aftermath and, and everything like that. I, I keep seeing pop up on Instagram and Facebook. So like that's for real. Jake Garrett was talking about that when he was on, um, that they were going to do that. So, um, yeah. So on that note, uh, <laughs> let's, uh, let's touch base. Of course, you know, we, we, we've kind of fallen out of this. I know Mike after slam reversal, you <laughs> have not really gone back to impact. Oh geez. There's a gif of it right there. <laughs> Oh no! Please there put that. Is. Can you can you put that on on there Twitter or in the group or something like that or anywhere? Just that's amazing. Are they using the paddle? No, the ref pushes them. Oh, okay. Jeez, uh, indie wrestling yeah. guys, indie wrestling. Um, but uh, 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 Global Force Wrestling, of course, there's been a lot of changes uh, with the show and some interesting moves and everything like that. Mad Mike, I know you keep an eye on it. I know uh, Brandon, uh, I think uh, posted the article in the uh, Facebook group as well. What is going on lately that's got uh, causing a stir with uh, Global Force? All right. Uh, so now. I don't know all the details because all the details weren't available, but it seems like Global Force Wrestling is now taking 100% of the profits from any merch um, that their athletes sell. Like, like if you buy an EC3 shirt, he's not getting any of that money. Um, to which I am saying... Everyone needs to fucking leave that company. Just fucking leave. Like, I, I saw Magnus is already gone. Madison Rain is already gone. Eddie, um, Davey Richards is already gone. Uh, Chris Masters, I think they said, was gone. Like, how, why, if you're a member of that roster, why would you even promote your shirts? If you know you're not going to get money off of it, right? It, it kind of breaks down that little model for for that kind of thing, right? Like even the WWE video games. If you do a my career mode, they tell you if your shirts are selling, mm-hmm. and you get in-game credits based on that. Like, right? 
Hey, well, and even uh, Brandon's saying they also want to take 10% of every booking they get, too. And I wonder if that counts for guys Ooh. that haven't been on for a while, like uh, like DJ Z. Jeez, right? That's, that, that's, how he, that's how he gets his living. Like, you're already, you're already talking about a company that changed their contracts from, you know, to per appearance fees. And then you also, and so, uh, you know, guys like DJ Z are taking all these indie bookings to make ends meet. Right? And now you want to take 10% of that, too? Really? Like, it, it's just... TNA's tried this here and there, too. Yeah, over, but, over I mean, th- this is this is Jeff Jarrett, the guy that tried to sell people gold. <laughs> exactly, exactly. The guy that held up WWE for thousands of dollars simply for one match because he didn't want to put over China. Mm-hmm. Like, Jeff Jarrett is a fucking tool. Plain and simple. He's just in it for the money at this point. It's the biggest carny of them all. Um, so, so, l- 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 well, first, do any of you guys have any ideas, on, uh, any thoughts on that before we, I want to kind of touch on another part of what they're doing there? I mean. No, it's stupid and messed up. Yeah, it, it, it really. It. I think it was all covered. Mm-hmm. Mike covered it pretty well. <laughs> yeah. Good job, Mike. Yeah, for the most part. It, it's it's ridiculous. Um, but like like you had mentioned earlier off off show about you think they're still allowed to do pro wrestling tees mm-hmm. stuff from, my understanding is they are from from what i've read yeah i, I don't and how long will that go until like gfw goes oh you're not wearing any of our stuff you're wearing your stuff that's not cool and then like where do you draw the line? Well, I mean, what's their incentive to even do well in the ring at that point? You know, well, like, why well, would you put your body through well, no, that? No, no, no. I mean, at that point, I mean, you're getting paid. To, you're getting paid to do a show, and and it's a bigger platform that more people are going to see you. Yeah, it does. Yeah. There is weight. Whatever you think of where GFW is, you know, yeah, they're kind of on a weird network, but they are on television. I know there's indie promotions that claim to have a Roku channel where where millions of people watch them. Or have the ability to, or something, and more people would come to that promotion. I don't know if that was true, but that yeah. that is a, a weight that these these guys look at when they're looking at something like that. But are you are you comfortable with the company making money off your back? That's what any wrestling where, company does. Where though. you, yeah, but where you could potentially have income, where you could have potentially have an area of income anywhere else. Right. It's like a like a a fee you pay. To yeah. wrestle for them, mm-hmm. like, would you consider leaving that on the table and actually giving and, and that, that's, giving and that's it to them? What benefit do you see? You know, are you going to get enough benefit out of? Yeah, yeah, is the exposure worth it? Exactly, and I think for, and I think the answer is no for a lot of guys, yeah. and yes for a lot more guys. Right? Yeah, I mean, I think it may be yes initially for a while. Yes, just for a little bit. Yeah, and then it's. All right, I'm out. Yeah, I'll use you. Just, just I've as you are using me. Because I've seen this in other professions, right? Where they belong to a group that's taking like oh, those guys are taking a little bit bigger percentage than I think is fair. Mm. I'm going to go do my thing over there, and you see a lot of these guys leave and do the indies, and they're just unattached, right? Yeah. Um, but it just it just has a lot going against it, and it, it doesn't help, you know, because you, you want to support a company because you're like, okay, it's another place for these guys to work. It's another place that, you know, I, you know we always put over, like, hey, DJZ's on Impact, you know, so yeah. I, I got to support Impact because I got to support DJZ because he's, you know the guy, the guy we follow, right? He's a friend of the show. You know, he's a he's a friend of the you know local wrestling and everything. So, but to see something like this happens, and you're just like, well, that affects that guy. You know, yeah. especially hearing his story lately, uh, like on Cole Cabana, right? About you know everything that he's dealt with since you know the changes at TNA and, and what he dealt with in Mexico City. Um, but uh, you know, it, it's it's a little disheartening because then you're yeah. like. It's, it's right. Like, you know, the fans that pay attention like us, I don't know what this does to their numbers and where they're at, but, you know, we're just like, well, fuck those guys, yeah. you know. Um, well, like Larry said, creatively, where does that put you? Because if you have something that's really good with your character and you do it mm-hmm. and it's good enough to put on a shirt and sell lots of shirts and you want to leave 
is that still yours or is it the company's? Right, right. And, and, you, and that's where it gets sketchy. Yeah, you get into this. Then you get into that whole broken hearty crap. Yeah, yep, you, yep. you get into this gray area where, where you're like, well, well, that was mine. You just happened to put on a T-shirt, so who owns it? Mm-hmm. You're making money off the T-shirt, but if I leave, are you still allowed to do it? And and it gets, I think it might get kind of messy. It, 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 it might, but but then you get things like, I feel like, you know, it, we were saying this the other night about the, the Canellas thing. Yeah. Right, uh, uh, Mike and Maria Canales, right? It, it feels like Ring of Honor and TNA were workshopping for what now they're getting in, T- in, in WWE, right? Same with the Hardys, kind of, you know, yeah, no, they're not able to really use it at, to full effect now as Mike and I have gone back and forth about, right? Uh, but that's what got them back, right? They got to do that to get the bigger job. Yeah. So, and again, that's not the path for everybody, but somebody, yeah. somebody that says, I can get on Impact TV, do something, develop something, and get the attention of something else, then okay. Yeah. You know, it's a step forward until it's not anymore. If you can afford to, yeah, if you can afford to do that. If you can afford to do it, like yeah. who can really afford to do it and deal with that. I mean, the, the, the same Davy Richards just left. I mean, they're, they're bleeding talent. So it's like, what do they get to, keep, to stay? Apparently the answer is Lucha Underground cast-offs. Um, or triple A cast offs at least, right? Yeah, triple yeah, A cast offs, basically. So, so, so uh, you know, obviously, you know, we, we're seeing a lot of, and I wanted to touch on you with Mike, uh, with you, Mike, on this. Um, we're seeing a lot of guys pop up there, and, and just to set the table a little bit, um, uh, Lucha Underground finished recording, I believe, June of last year. What we're seeing now, through the end of the season, season four, to my knowledge, has not been announced, confirmed, or is starting filming anytime soon. And I don't know if the Comic Con had any new news on that, Mike. I haven't heard anything one way or another. Right, because they were there. They were. They definitely had a presence there. So, so I would think that would be a place they would do something like that. Um, but um, so, Mike, I know a lot of guys are coming out. Can you kind of give us a little bit of the breakdown of who who's who's showing up in Impact TV these days? Or will be very uh, soon. Well, and, and not, you, this, not necessarily TV. And, and do, do you know, also, do you know the extent of this AAA situation that's happening? Oh, yeah. Did you? Yeah. Um, so basically what happened in AAA is um, Taya was the, uh, I, I'm going to butcher the pronunciation, but the Raider Reina's champion, basically the women's champion of AAA. And uh, apparently something happened where, uh, she was not able to defend her title due to some kind of injury situation, but she was never booked to be at the show. Um, so they had uh, Mundo bring her championship there just to say that she wa- that she wouldn't be able to defend, and they basically stripped her of the championship without her knowledge and crowned Sexy Star the new Rey de Reina as champion. Like, just... Basically, uh, like an actual Montreal screw job, but in Mexico. No. And mm. and Taya Taya was not too pleased with that. Basically, like she's been and like Vampiro has been one of the main faces of the promotion, and she's been running down Vampiro. So I mm. would not be surprised if they're both done with Lucha. Mm. It wouldn't be- shock me at all because, because they're, they're they're doing. They're doing impact house shows in New York. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that means that they're coming to impact, but or just special attraction to who? Yeah, I I wouldn't be surprised at this point. Who's doing impact shows? Uh, Morrison and and Taya. Oh, so and and on top of that, we have Drago's been showing up, right? Well, well, that that's due the actual relationship with AAA. Okay. Like because okay. Conan, sir. Like that's the reason. Okay. Drug- okay. So they're coming for that. I mean, again, these guys haven't worked with Lucha Underground, so you can't really think of it as a normal. Well, I guess they're done with Lucha. You know, if they're showing up here, kind of thing, right? Because it just it doesn't work that way. You know, it's, it's a post-produced thing. You're, you're filming it and then you release. So so it's not like, you know, it's kind of like the thing with Hernandez, right? When when he was there, but then he was on Impact TV, like pretty much uh, at the same it, time. Yeah, except that. They didn't know he was going back to impact. Right, exactly. So I mean, yeah. that, that, that was that was something else, but but, but also a situation that kind of came from that kind of uh, release schedule, right? Um, so so 
So if you miss your Lucha Underground guys or want a little bit more of them, and it's kind of interesting probably to see them in a different environment and against a little bit of different wrestlers, I guess, right? Um, sort of speak, speaking of Lucha Underground a little bit, because mm-hmm. like, um, I think Alex brought up like this is the reason pro wrestling tees exists. And I was looking to see how many people from Impact were on uh, pro wrestling tees. And I got distracted that um, Cage is on pro wrestling tees. And there's a shirt of Cage holding the gauntlet from Lucha Underground, but it has all of the Infinity Stones in it. <laughs> and it just says "Effin' Machine. <laughs> and I kind of want to buy the shirt. That's amazing. I'm not even joking. I mean, and even like, like, and, and, and it's not like pro wrestling tees has been without its problems. There's actually a subset of wrestlers, promotions, promoters, whatever. But, uh, by the way, I just saw the, 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 uh, Nintendo CM Punk shirts that are on there. Holy crap. I want like the super Mario three straight edge shirt. Uh, but, uh, anyway, sorry. Uh, oh my God. James Ellsworth has a pro wrestling tee. Site. Of course he does. <laughs> of course he does. But you know, as many, so is Kurt Angle. Um, as, as a wrestling man show, we have some shirts there too. Uh, but you know, the people that have problems with it, you know, now you have like your stone Coles and everybody, and maybe that's kind of uh, a little bit pushing aside all these indie guys that are trying to get on there. Our, our buddies like Jackson Argus. Right. Uh, but, uh, you know, it's still a great outlet and is it, well, isn't the pro wrestling tees just got into hot topic. Recently, that's why there's Bullet Club shirts and Hot Topic and everything like that, yeah. uh, because they're like basically the only place I can do it, right? Uh, right. Except for right. Jeff Jarrett's merch stand, um, but uh, but yeah, yeah, they are official. Uh, well, hey, okay, Impact Wrestling. Okay, here's mm, Impact Wrestling is an official apparel provider, or they are an official p- apparel provider for Impact Wrestling. Uh-oh. Now I'm curious about this. Double dipping. Yeah, exactly. Because there is definitely, yeah, like there's Faces of Decay by Impact Wrestling. There's an uh, EC3 by Impact oh, Wrestling. Sir. So I, I think it, I think it's just a way for them to put some of their shirts on pro wrestling teams. Right. Well, in, in pro because wrestling. have you ever have you ever tried to navigate that Impact shopping site? It is garbage. That's true. And they're just trying to get out there. There's still some TNA just 2005 like shirts. Apparently, you can buy Johnny Mundo sunglasses. Ooh. American made ass kicking machine. Are there any total nonstop asshole shirts? Probably not anymore, right? <laughs> I don't believe so. They sold out. Yeah, seriously. It was the best thing you had going. Hot ticket. But, um, but it, it, it's interesting to see what's going on there. And, and geez, holy crap, I forgot how big Pro Wrestling Tees has gotten. Johnny Gargano has a lot of amazing shirts. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. And good for he, good for yeah. WWE for not shutting this down on on guys that they've signed, too. You know, like oh yeah, there's a lot of guys that are just like on 205 Live and NXT that just have site that just have uh, pages up here. Yeah, I feel like a lot of these guys. I mean, and these and you know, you know, to the, these guys were doing regular indie bookings uh, as they got signed to 205 Live, right? So they let them finish that kind of stuff off, like like that. You know, this kind of like soft WWE on indies thing has been really nice the last couple of years. So, what's it? Oh, oh wait, wait, Rob's got something. Rob's got something to say. I was gonna say it's kind of less work for WWE too, because then they don't have to develop merch or as much of it. You know what I mean? Well, they get to see what's well, who's selling, yeah, and they, yeah, yeah. you know what I mean. Well, yeah, and plus Without. they get to gauge how well these guys are doing on their own. Plus, maybe if they kind of leave the merchandise alone, or you know, whatever, um, that can, you know, they could justify paying guys less. <laughs> That is true yeah. because there's been so, a little bit of question on what some of these NXT guys get paid. Mm-hmm. So maybe they just let that go for that. So, so like a lot of the guys that are with WWE right now, you said they're guys that pretty much were part of the, like, kind of bridging over from the indies or like legends guys and stuff. Yeah, but especially those cruiserweights and things, right? Mm-hmm. So it'd be interesting to see again, like maybe guys that used to have stores that don't anymore. Like how long it took them to 
kind of phase of my, or if it's really been a thing that long. And it depends on the deal. Like, I don't think you're going to find an Austin 316 shirt on here. Yeah. Right. Well, yeah, there's the, the copyright. Yeah, the, the trademark. Yeah, stuff. yeah. Certain yeah. things. Well, are, you might see knockoffs because Joey Ryan's got some knockoffs. Yeah, yeah. Well, you're allowed to do parodies. You're allowed to do parodies. Yeah. But I mean, That's like, that like guys like, you know, let's say have maybe been with, you know, NXT or, or the main roster for like a year now. You know, like if there were guys that a year ago had pro wrestling tea stores that don't now. You know what I mean? Like, if it eventually gets phased out, like maybe that's part of the thing. It's like, hey, get rid of what you have. <laughs> just, just as a little bit of an exercise, I clicked on the the top sellers, and I believe these are the top sellers. Uh, I don't know what the time frame is, but very much so, it's um, it it, it it it's a lot of villain club, bullet club, young bucks, Kenny Omega stuff, right? And then it's uh, you know, uh, the bullet club umbrella they're selling. Um, is that an air freshener I'm seeing? Oh, wait, wait, P- P- C- PWC crate. Okay, that's, that's Hey, that Sorg, uh, do you know how that Bullet Club air freshener smells? How does that smell? Too sweet. Oh, damn. <laughs> uh, wow, it's like basically Bullet Club <laughs> for the first, like, five rows. <laughs> then we get some Rainmaker. We get some uh, New Japan logo. We got the cream of the crop. Uh, Macho Man, more Bullet Club, more Macho Man. Then we get into. I I think Champa did a uh, parody shirt of WWE's DIY shirt. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's fun. That's fantastic. But it really is like you know that crew, New Japan, weird stuff like the Heavenly Bodies, Tom Pritchard. Uh, a little bit of punk, a little bit of uh, old school Superfly and Ted DiBiase vintage stuff. Some more Savage. Like and I'm not old. seeing uh, some Dalton Castle, uh, some some odd stuff. Godfather. Uh, so so it's a lot of like now the young bucks and them that they don't really wrestle a lot stateside with. Mm. They do. They do as tons much, of indies and ROH. They, yeah, but as as Bullet Club. Yeah, I, I think they things. represent it anywhere. I say they they go and yeah. Kenny Omega and they they'll, they do they, a lot they'll of show US up. shows. I know they do a lot. Yeah, of, they show up with Bullet Club shirts and and everything. How so often are they? I don't know about Kenny States, Omega though. though. I don't know about Kenny Omega though. That's that's Young what, I'm just thinking, like Omega can go yeah, and, Ring of Honor on there and push his stuff because he's mm-hmm. generally not. He's limited in mm-hmm. his exposure mm-hmm. to last I knew US audience, so they can't really get a shirt of his if right, right. If they don't the place. see him. This is the place, you know. Yeah. So th- this is the extension of of these guys. Uh, uh, Mercy, I'm with Zach Saber Jr. You know, how how many chances do you have to see somebody like that? Right. Uh, but right. you're watching them on New Japan World and Ring yep. of Honor Ringside, you know, things like that. So and, you can just click over. Oh, and, absolutely. So so it's it's really kind of opened this up, yeah. which is really good for these guys. You know, yeah. this, this oh, is yeah. one of the reasons why young bucks are saying, "Sorry, I just complete your <laughs> handed ah. handed the camera for Mike in in the face." <laughs> um, but. Uh, <laughs> Definitely. But this is why, like the young bucks, go on Rolling Stone and say, "Yeah, we don't need to be booked to uh, WWE because we're doing fine, right? You know, and we'll be probably doing fine for a while on this kind of stuff. Plus their bookings, plus what they do at the stands. I mean, they're doing yeah. okay, yeah. You know, which is great. You know, great that there's this opportunity and you don't have to be WWE or bust. No. So, but eventually they so all f- come around. <laughs> Everybody wants a taste of WrestleMania. That is true. Every, everybody Even does. Sting. Yeah. Yeah. WrestleMania Sting eventually Kool-Aid. came over. Sting, Sting did what Sting did. <laughs> yeah. you know? Sork, everybody wants a Sork. taste no matter what it is. Not just, just, not just Impact, our official apparel providers, but so are New Japan, ROH, and Lucha. Right. Sorry. I thought I yeah. I thought I, I I read it in my head, but I don't think I said it out loud. <laughs> okay. Cause yeah. Because I, I see a bunch of different wrestling promotions that just have like – like House of Hardcore's on here. Right, uh, right, right. Inspire Pro Wrestling's on here. Uh, IWC's on there as well. Um, yeah. But if you go to like the bottom of like the front page, yeah, or no, midway, yeah, it says Lucha ROH uh, uh, of New Japan Wrestling. So yeah, they're all involved there. Basically, everybody who's anybody is on this thing, and we're there too. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's a good time too. It's like we did an ad for them. Uh, but anyways, buy our shirts. Uh, it, it, guys, what did you learn from wrestling this week? You guys in the chat too. Oh boy. Man. 
Oh boy. Uh, I'll, t- I'll touch on the chat room real quick. I, I learned. Go ahead. I learned that John Cena should have been the Punjabi prison because it, because it would have been the first time. He can actually say, you can't see me. <laughs> wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You won that one. Uh, what about you guys on the couch? <laughs> oh, oh man. Hmm. Let me ponder. What did I learn? The fashion police have made me a bigger fan of the X-Files than the <laughs> X-Files themselves. <laughs> There you go. It's sad they weren't on SmackDown tonight. It was a tragedy. Mm-hmm. Damn you, Jericho. Match went long. Match that went intro long. promo went too long, man. Mm-hmm. They got cut out of the had show. To cut them. Had to cut them. See them I, next week. I, did, I learned that I enjoyed Great Balls of Fire more than I thought I did, and I think it was better than Battleground. What? Get out. It was a better show. I, I, I concur. It was I, a better I show. Wow. But that aside, SmackDown is producing some really good matches. Mm-hmm. Like that triple threat tonight, and they're on the right path. But as a pay-per-view, I have to say, Great Balls of Fire was actually really fun mm-hmm. and was a good you know, start-to-finish pay-per-view. Battleground lost a little bit for me. Mm-hmm. Where did it lose it for you? The middle. <laughs> Well, I mean, what, like, what other matches? The main event there? really. The main event was okay. It was a hokey. It was a hokey. Uh, like you have to just see the prison match. I thought that was the best match that they've had so far. It was two. okay. Uh, it was it was serviceable. I enjoyed it, but like, it wasn't. You know, I'm not going to remember it five years from now mm-hmm. or anything. Uh, the tag match was good. The women's match was okay. That was my only problem with it. Was Owens the women's and, match. Owens and and Styles ended kind of strangely. But mm-hmm. the match itself was okay, but the ending was real weird. And anything else I really can't remember. Who else was on? The women's match ended oddly too. Like That was the only match I was kinda iffy on. It was a solid don't get me wrong, it was a solid pay per view. I enjoyed it. Mm-hmm. But I, I enjoyed Great Balls of Fire. Somehow right? somehow Great Balls of Fire went out. It it was a I don't I don't know what it was. It was just a it was a fun, better show. I, I mm. think Great Balls of Fire yes. also lowered our expectations because of how horrible that name is. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. We that, did that expect that show to suck. But that, that was supposed to take Fastlane's place for worst pay-per-view All ever. Right. Rob's ducking in here yeah. for his uh, what he learned this weekend. Yeah, I, I mentioned this earlier in the show that I, I learned that the indies can do the flag match uh, <laughs> step better than uh, the WWE is doing it. Right, apparently. Jackson Argus and R.C. Dupree... A, a yeah. past and future friend, uh, friend of the show here uh, against uh, uh, Jock Sampson and Shane Yinya face. Yeah, and it was I mean, it was kind of kind of quick, but short. But like I said, the the setup they had for it and the little and the poll that was like specifically made for that kind of thing, you know, mm-hmm. which which uh, it was it was pretty impressive. Although tip for indies, make sure both flags are the same size. Oh yeah, the American <laughs> I, was no, like way I, bigger, thought, I think it? that was hilarious. Yeah, <laughs> if that wasn't intentional, that was great. Yeah, it was it was it was, it was pretty uh, pretty amusing. Awesome. I I have no problem with that. Uh, from the chat room, we got a lot of them. Bobby F. J. Town learned that Corey Graves and Tony Nese killed Left Shark from Katy Perry's uh, Super Bowl halftime show yeah, and made yeah. a suit and tights from him, respectively, and wore them on 205 Live tonight. Shit. Uh, Alex Cars learned that everyone on Raw and SmackDown are interchangeable between brands, including Renee Young. He, he says he's been doing kind of a comparison thing, <laughs> and like like Rowan Reigns and John Cena are basically the same person, but like about how they book them and everything like that. Um, let's see. Do, 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 do. I've never seen John Cena do that to an ambulance. <laughs> that's, yeah, that's true. That's true. I've never You're seen right. John Cena fail a wellness policy when he was a champion. Uh, Donald and that's there. because Ooh. they threw away the tests before it got out. Donald says he learned that the flag matches are overrated no matter who had them. So a little bit different uh, uh, look at those. Brandon learned that you don't want to make Kurt Angle mad or you will, or you will will squ- get squashed during a match. I don't. What? What was that? I didn't watch it all last night. It was so uh, I, I can't remember. Oh, it oh, was uh, Hawkins. Emma, Emma too. I think right. She was on Raw. Yeah, yeah. No Emma was I on didn't Raw watch it. and I got and got squished by. Because uh, she said she Nijax. was going to start dating Jordan. Squashed. Is that what she said? Yeah. 
I didn't. I didn't get this. I didn't get to see the promo. I, like yep. I saw it, but like I was outside when it she was, was happening. Like, how do you get anything to happen around here? I started the Steve's Revolution, which, but um, she was like, I wrestled all those things. What do you got to do around here? Like I'm just gonna start dating Jordan. Squash. <laughs> <laughs> you don't mess with. Yeah, Angle is very vindictive when it comes to that. Uh, do, what did I learn this weekend? Was what a, did you? That learn? was a. Plow? Is that a plow truck that I think went that by? That was a plow truck. It's the middle of July. Yes, we're sweating our asses off, and they're shoveling snow outside. Yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, we're finally out of the sweltering basement, and then there's a sewage problem, so I turned off the AC. You bastard! Still not you as bastard. it's still not as bad as the basement. It's hot boxing us. Yeah, <laughs> I was thinking that. Like, it's hot boxing us. Just like old Having times. Having PTSD. Yeah, yeah, sort. yeah flashbacks. It just looks <laughs> shinier, but it's the same sweat box. Brick walls everywhere. Brick walls the the walls are just whiter. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just bounces it right this heat directly at you. Um, geez, what did I learn this week? Um, I learned. I learned. No, I, don't, I have nothing. I actually have nothing. Nothing. I have nothing. 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 What should, do you do? You have something I should have. You should have something at least about Kali. About Kali. What did I, I don't know. Sword. I, I learned. What did I you learn about how happy Riz can be from a great Kali comeback? What did you learn? Sword. About you studios? should have learned how difficult it is to move a couch across the street. There's that, but that had nothing to do with wrestling. Except for us wrestling a couch, and then we found an ice cream truck and just stopped <laughs> at the ice. The, 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 we waved down the ice cream <gasps> truck. We oh. had ice cream by the couch, and then we came out. Wait, I, I have my learned thing. I just do it before I, I forget about it. I, I talked to you about this. Everybody is getting their wish. Yes. For comebacks this year. Yes. You had you got your I wish got with Kurt, Kurt Angle, Angle, and now Riz got his wish for Great Cully. Yep. Who's left? Who's Sorry, left I'm, for the I'm, big I'm comeback? I'm not getting my wish. Who's your wish? Well, he's dead. Who? But who? Macho Man. Oh. And, and, and I don't think Matt Carlins is getting his wish of Bad News Barrett. <laughs> uh, he could, he could, he could. But uh, sorry, a better I chance did, of I did learn one life. other thing. <laughs> WWE has finally taken a step in the right direction, merchandise-wise, because the WWE women are getting their own line of toys. This is true. Are you talking about the this Barbies? The Barbies and action figures. That's and so action weird. figures. Very similar to the DC superhero girls that are out now. Right. And they look fucking amazing. And if you just want a little bit of joy in your life, find the video of the four horsewomen seeing their Barbie dolls for the first time. I, I did see this on Instagram on like Sasha and a couple others, like them at you know, they were like at the panel and everything and, and, and looking at them. It's it's pretty great. Not uh, to kill the mood, but I would kill for a Braun Strowman Ken doll. <laughs> that would be hilarious. As would I. <laughs> well that went that went in a direction. Rob <laughs> Rob, you got something to say. Yeah, it's, gonna say right, it's like we get like Rob's yeah. in this lonely like booth behind the couch yeah, now. Just- the producer's just corner. Keep, keep crawling out on <laughs> the couch. But no, you were you were saying something about, oh yeah, the couch, you know, it's got nothing to do with wrestling. But no, I think you are underestimating the abilities of that couch and that Ric Flair could probably wrestle it to a, <laughs> to a three-star match. <laughs> Absolutely. He could really put that couch over. Yeah. Um, he gets, he gets he's, up the hill. He's probably wrestled with a few up. couches in his, in his day, so... <laughs> I can't wait to see him put the figure four on it. Guys, it's been a blast. It's this been a blast. This is the Daily Show couch, isn't it? <laughs> the old Daily Show couch, right? Yeah, yeah. Back in the... Well, who was the guy that had it before? Um, Craig Kilborn. Craig Kilborn. There you go. Uh, guys, it's been fun. This is the first of many uh, here right in the new studios. Sorgatron Media here in Broadway Avenue and Beachview in Pittsburgh. And uh, and uh, we that's it. We've done it. That's it. We've done it. Larry found the place. I found it. Chad the Shad. I just need to shut it down. Shut it. <laughs> no, 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 not yet, not yet, not shut yet. Shut it down. We're done. We <laughs> did it. <laughs> Kill the light. Thanks. Five eighty. <laughs> See you guys later. <laughs> shut it down. Thanks, Rob, for joining us as well. Ringside, Rob. Uh, uh, popping up from behind the couch there, and uh, Mad Mike, <laughs> of course, up in Poughkeepsie, New York. 
He's, he's saluting us on audio. Uh, and, of course, the Riz joining us earlier tonight. And everybody in the chat room, uh, Brandon, Bobby, and the rest, uh, Wheels, and, and, and Carlins, and Tina, and, yep. Tina and, uh, and, and there's another oh, new Billy. name. That came, it, Hope you enjoyed Billy it. Billy was in there this earlier. This is it. We're done. That's it. No, no, we're not done. We're coming back <laughs> next week. And I believe we'll have Billy Ruxpin on in studio for this, and we're, we're going to do we're an We're coming radio, back so. in an all-new studio. With yes, air conditioning. Yes, doing the a traveling. new studio it'll be like, every week. It'll be like a whole new studio, right? Yep. Absolutely. We're going to be in the Tom Green Show studio next week. Exactly, exactly. We'll see you guys next time. Mayhem Show, out. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.